Hello, so in today's lesson, we're going to be talking about a macroeconomic model known as the Phillips curve. As we'll see, this is a simple diagram showing the inverse relationship that exists between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in an economy during the short run. To understand unemployment and inflation a little bit more clearly, we can start by looking at an aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram for a particular country. So as you see on the left here, we've got a simple ADAS model with an economy that in the short run is producing at its full employment level. So let's draw an AD curve that intersects the SRAS curve right here at the full employment level of output. We can assume that in this economy the prevailing level of unemployment is equal to the natural rate of unemployment. Now for most Western economies it's believed that the NRU or the unemployment rate that exists when an economy is producing at its full employment level is around 5%. That's just an estimate, but in the United States, the NRU is believed to be around 5%, so we'll use that as our starting point here. Now, what is a stable price level considered to be? An economy producing at full employment is believed to have a stable price level, which we'll call PE. At this full employment level of output, there is some inflation in the economy. Let's say that at this level of output, inflation is equal to 2%. So the full employment price level corresponds with an inflation rate of 2% and the full employment level of output corresponds with an unemployment rate of 5%. Let's look at our graph on the right now and we can illustrate this equilibrium unemployment and inflation level by drawing some dotted lines over here and showing that when this economy is producing at full employment it has an inflation rate of 2% and we'll draw a dotted line up from 5% and we'll put a point right here on the graph on the right. So on our graph on the left we'll call this equilibrium point point A which corresponds with the point on our graph on the right of point A. So we've got two point A's here both representing an economy producing at its full employment level with an equilibrium inflation rate of 2% and a full employment unemployment rate of 5%. Now what we're going to examine is what happens when something changes in the nation's macroeconomy on the left to the unemployment rate and the inflation rate as illustrated on the right. First let's identify this graph on the right. In fact any graph that shows the relationship between inflation and unemployment is known as a Phillips curve after the economist A.W. Phillips who first observed this relationship in the United Kingdom in the 1800s. So our Phillips curve we're going to see shows the relationship between inflation and unemployment. But in order to observe this relationship, something has to change in a nation's economy. So looking back at a graph on the right, let's assume that a housing market bubble leads to an increase in household wealth and confidence, and therefore household consumption, causing aggregate demand in the economy to increase from AD to AD1. Now we've got a greater level of demand for the nation's goods and services and therefore there's a greater level of employment in the nation and equilibrium output increases from YFE to Y1 and there's demand pull inflation causing the equilibrium price level to rise from PE to P1. Let's look at the price level first. Let's assume that when demand for the nation's output increases there is inflation in the economy that exceeds the equilibrium inflation rate at full employment. Let's say that inflation has now risen to 3.8% and as we can predict with this new greater level of output, unemployment in the economy falls. Let's assume that whereas before the natural rate of unemployment was 5%, there is now an unemployment rate equal to 3% we've got an economy that is essentially overheating here. Inflation is undesirably high and unemployment is unnaturally low. So we can now draw a new dotted line over to our Phillips curve model and we can plot these two new points. We've got an inflation rate of 3.8 percent right there and we've got an unemployment rate of only 3 percent right here. So if you plot those two points we get what we will call point B on our Phillips curve, which corresponds with point B 
in our ADAS diagram. Now this is one possible scenario. If, if aggregate demand increases in the economy, we see that unemployment falls and inflation increases. But what if aggregate demand declines? What if we have a decrease in household consumption or a decrease in investment that causes a leftward shift at the AD curve? How will this affect inflation and unemployment and how will it affect our Phillips curve on the right? Let's assume that aggregate demand declines due to a fall in household wealth or confidence from AD to AD2. What happens to the price level in the economy? With a fall in aggregate demand, we'll see that there will be actually a lower price level of P2. And let's assume that that corresponds with an inflation rate of only 1.5%. In fact, the price level doesn't actually fall technically. Rather, the inflation rate falls. This is not deflation. In other words, this is disinflation. But as aggregate demand falls, there will be less demand for the nation's goods and services. Therefore, output will fall to Y2. And let's assume that this lower level of output corresponds with an unemployment rate of instead of 5% at full employment, let's say we now have a 8% unemployment rate. This economy is now in a demand deficient recession not unlike that experienced in the United States and Western Europe in 2008 and 2009. Inflation is undesirably low and unemployment is undesirably high. Let's go back to our Phillips curve diagram now. We'll draw a dotted line across from the new equilibrium price level which as we see corresponds with an inflation rate of only 1.5% and we will go out to 7% on the unemployment axis. And what we have is a new point on our Phillips curve model. We'll call this point C, which corresponds with equilibrium point C on our ADAS diagram. Now we have three points on our graph on the right. This is certainly enough to draw a curve that illustrates the short run relationship between inflation and unemployment. So let's do that. Let's connect these three dots, points B, A, and C. And when we connect these, we should see that there is an inverse relationship between unemployment and inflation in the economy. So we'll call this PC for the Phillips curve. Now, what explains this inverse relationship? Anytime aggregate demand shifted in the graph on the left, we moved along our Phillips curve on the right. An increase in aggregate demand from AD to AD1 caused a movement upward and to the left al along our short run Phillips curve. Aggregate demand increases causing demand pull inflation which is higher than the desirable rate of inflation of 2% and a level of unemployment lower than the natural rate of unemployment of, of 5%. Now, when aggregate demand fell in our graph on the left, we had a demand deficient recession accompanied by disinflation as, on a, as inflation falls from 2% to 1.5%. And we have cyclical unemployment as unemployment rises from 5% to 8%. So what we can, cl can conclude is that any time AD shifts, there is a movement along the Phillips curve. A shift in aggregate demand causes a movement along this Phillips curve, which itself shows the general inverse or indirect relationship between the inflation rate and the unemployment rate in a nation's economy. So now let's have a look at what would happen if instead of aggregate demand shifting in our graph on the left, aggregate supply shifted and how that would affect the Phillips curve. So here we have a fresh Phillips curve model and a fresh aggregate demand aggregate supply model in which the economy once again is producing at its full employment level with a stable price level of PE. Now in the previous part of this activity we showed what happens when aggregate demand shifts and how that corresponds with the movement along this downward sloping Phillips curve. Next I want to talk about the possibility of what happens if aggregate supply shifts. Now anything that changes the average costs of production for the nation's producers will have an effect on aggregate supply. For example if there's something like a negative supply shock causing the costs of production for a nation's firms or energy costs or transportation costs to rise, there will be what's called a negative supply shock shifting the SRAS curve to the left to SRAS1.
Now what impact does a negative supply shock have on the price level and the level of employment or output in the economy? Due to cost push inflation, there is now a new price level corresponding with an inflation rate that is greater than our initial inflation rate of 2%. Let's say that inflation is now increased to 3.5% due to higher energy prices and higher transportation costs. Now at the same time, there will be a lower level of output in the economy of Y1, which will correspond with the higher level of unemployment. If you recall before, the natural rate of unemployment in this economy was 5%. But if there's a negative supply shock, this might lead to an increase in unemployment of 2% to 7%. Now, how do we reconcile this with our Phillips curve? Before, we said that any time that unemployment increased, inflation decreased. But in this case, an increase in unemployment from 5 to 7 corresponds with an increase in inflation from 2 to 3.5. So we actually have a point somewhere to the right of our original Phillips curve in which inflation and unemployment have increased. Now this actually can be explained by the fact that a shift to the left of aggregate supply corresponds with a shift to the right of the Phillips curve. So we can actually draw a new Phillips curve out here to the right and call it PC1. Now why do I say that the entire Phillips curve shifts to the right? This makes sense because if aggregate demand now were to increase in our graph on the left from AD to AD1, we would have demand pull inflation and lower unemployment. So that would correspond with the movement along our new Phillips curve of PC1 up and to the left. On the other hand, if AD were to decrease to AD2, this would cause inflation to fall and unemployment to rise, and we would move downward and to the right along our new Phillips curve. So essentially, a shift of the aggregate supply curve corresponds with a shift of the Phillips curve. If AS shifts to the left due to a negative supply shock, the Phillips curve will shift to the right, causing both inflation and unemployment to rise. On the other hand, if there is a decrease in the nation's producers' cost of production due to anything like a lower minimum wage or a positive supply shock in which energy prices or transportation costs were to decline, then the SRAS curve in the graph on the left would shift to the right to SRAS2. At this new increased level of aggregate supply, the nation's firms can actually sell their products at a lower price level of P1, which corresponds with an inflation rate of 1%, and employment will be greater and output will be greater at Y2, which corresponds with an unemployment rate of 3%. A positive supply shock has two very positive effects on the nation's economy. If the cost of production for the nation's firms fall, both the price level will fall and the unemployment level will fall. We now have unemployment of 3% and an inflation rate of 1%, which gives us a new Phillips curve to the left of our original short run Phillips curve. So we now have a new Phillips curve of PC2. And of course there is a new Phillips curve because if something caused aggregate demand to increase now, we would have demand pull inflation and even lower unemployment causing a movement up and to the left along, along our new Phillips curve. On the other hand, if AD were to decline and move along the new SRAS curve of SRAS2, there would be deflation or disinflation and a higher level of unemployment. So in fact the entire Phillips curve shifts to the left when aggregate supply shifts to the right. So looking back at our short run Phillips curve model we can, con we can make a couple of conclusions here. Anything that causes aggregate demand to move in the graph on the left will cause a movement along the Phillips curve on the right. However, anything that shifts SRAS will shift the Phillips curve in the opposite direction. A leftward or inward shift of aggregate supply causes the entire Phillips curve to shift to the right, causing both an increase in inflation and unemployment. On the other hand, a positive supply shock, which shifts the SRAS curve to the right, will cause the Phillips curve to shift to the left,
resulting in lower inflation and lower unemployment. So that wraps up our lesson on the short run Phillips curve. In our next video lesson, we'll talk about the long run Phillips curve and examine the relationship between inflation and unemployment that exists in the long run once all prices and wages have had time to adjust to the equilibrium level of aggregate demand and aggregate supply.